Hi everybody and welcome! In today's video we're going to look into some of the resources that you can check out for getting started with AI music. Specifically, I'm going to talk about three books that I believe are very uh, valuable for get you, getting you started with AI music. Now, uh, if you followed my previous videos, uh, so you know that uh, AI music can be divided into the more generative side and the more analytical side. Unfortunately, there aren't many resources for the generative side, but there are a few very good uh, resources about the more analytical side. So using AI for analyzing music and processing it. One way of calling this field is also music information retrieval. The reality here is that even though there are a few resources, I wouldn't say that it's overwhelming the number of books that we have out there that can get you started. Some of these books are more advanced, others are more for beginners. So today I'm going to try to give you uh, a list of three books that I think like could be very good for getting you started with the analytical side of AI music. The first book that I suggest is Fundamentals of Music Processing by Meinert Mueller. Mueller is an amazing MIR, Music Information Retrieval uh, researcher, and he put together like this great book, which isn't that much about AI, rather it provides you with a great introduction to all the audio DSP techniques that, or audio digital signal processing techniques that you need to know in order to process a music. First of all, from this book, you'll pick up the different music representations that we have from MIDI all the way down to like audio signals. And the thing that I love about this book is that it is very thorough and it provides you with um, the, mathemat uh, the mathematical details to understand some of the techniques that we use in music processing, like the Fourier transform, for example. And that is very rigorous, sometimes a little bit too much, perhaps if you're not that familiar with mathematics, but still, like it's very good to get you started. The whole idea of this book is that uh, it's divided into a number of different chapters that tackle different music processing problems. Some of these are music synchronization. So for example, you have a piece of music and then you have a cover of that song and then you want to synchronize those two. Other things are chord recognition, so extracting chords from uh, an audio signal and also other stuff like tempo or bit tracking. So basically, uh, this is a great book because first of all, you're going to understand more or less what you can extract from audio signal in terms of musical uh, features. And at the same time, you're going to get uh, start, you're going to get introduced to a bunch of audio DSP techniques to do that. I really like this book because it's very thorough, as I mentioned, so you are going to get a very good understanding of the theory behind all the things. And so for that, like, it's amazing. But I think like there is a little bit of an issue with the book, which is that it doesn't provide any practical details like, or implementation details necessarily, which basically means that you have to figure that out by yourself. And if you are like a beginner, it's not always like simple to uh, kind of like implement all of these mathematical uh, ideas. But uh, the great thing is that there is a website that's called musicinformationretrieval.com where you have a bunch of Python notebooks which basically implement most of the ideas that you'll find in uh, Fundamentals of Music Processing. The second book that I want to discuss today is by Marcus Schedel and Peter Nees and it's called Music, Similarity and Retrieval. This is a very good book because it engages with all the things that are <laughs> central to music information retrieval. So uh, music search, indexing and a recommendation and definitely music similarity. Now the focus of this book is on again audio, uh, not necessarily like on the symbolic side of, of things, but I think like it, it does like a great job of introducing you to a bunch of like music features as the first step. So basically you're going to learn a lot about like MFCC, so zero crossing rate, all of these kind of things, which I believe like are extremely important to know uh, your way around music information retrieval. And then the kind of treatment that uh, the authors have about uh, the topic is 
uh, divided into a number of different parts. So the first part is all about content-based uh, retrieval. Basically, it means that we are going to analyze an audio signal and extract information directly from the audio signal to make sense of these musical objects and represent them. So we're going to build a model of a song, of, a, of an artist or, or of an album uh, using only content related features. So only things that come out from the audio signal itself. But then uh, the authors go uh, beyond this initial approach and they also look into contextual information. So what's contextual information? It's information that's like around the audio signal. So for example, it's all the meta data that you have uh, about a song, for example, uh, information about the artist, information about the band, all of these kind of things. And along with this metadata, they also put uh, in, they also like process information on the web. So they extract text that's related to songs or artists directly on the web. And so they use this contextual information along with content-based uh, resources or uh, information for uh, defining or for modeling a song. And this is like a quite advanced way of like doing music information retrieval. And it's something that we are seeing the, the whole like uh, community is going towards right now. Beyond the contextual uh, information, they also engage with uh, recommender systems, which is great, and also user-centered applications. So they look into uh, the types of um, applications where like music information retrieval is used as a function for uh, the user. So user like interfaces, intelligent interfaces that users can use to uh, discover new music and also recommend the systems. And this book is going to give you an overview of the the higher uh, I would say like research topics in music information retrieval and it will get you started like with all these different things like music similarity music recommendation system and I think like it's it's really good and it's very well written at the same time I believe that this book has like uh, again uh, a disadvantage or a weakness, which is basically doesn't provide you with any practical implementations of what like they uh, discuss in the book. Now, this is not necessarily a weakness of this book only. And if you look around and you pick up books uh, that are that have been written by academics, this is something that will recur all the time. So you'll get a very rigorous uh, treatment like of the topics, mat mathematical uh, treatment as well as like theoretical treatment, but sometimes like the uh, implementation side is completely missing. The third and final book that I would suggest you guys is called Music Recommendation and Discovery and it's been written by Oscar Selma. Selma is now the a VP of data science, I believe, or VP of data at um, Pandora. And he's done amazing research, obviously in music discovery and music recommendation. And some of his research that he's done uh, starting from his PhD is brought into uh, Pandora. But the great thing about this book, apart from getting you started on uh, music recommender systems and giving you like a very good idea of like the different things that have been done like in in uh, the uh, the field is also that it uh, gives you like a new uh, perspective of music recommendation. So what do I mean by that? Well, so when we do music recommendation, usually we use a couple of techniques. So one is like content based uh, recommendation. And again, it's uh, connected with like content or information that we can extract basically from the audio signal. Then we have like another uh, technique which we uh, usually use and guys like Spotify, Pandora even, I believe like they use it. And it's called collaborative filtering, which is basically using the behavior of the users, of the listeners, in order to provide recommendations that may be relevant uh, for them. But uh, Oscar here goes the extra mile. So basically, he looks at music recommendation and he 
uh, understands that the main problem is that most of the time the recommendation that we get from these systems is kind of like more or less like all the same so there are like a few number of tracks that get uh, recommended a lot and then there's a long tail that never gets recommended and so this book is all about the long tail and providing recommendations that are unconventional but still relevant to the user and in the process you'll also learn a lot uh, about uh, music recommendation as a whole and there's a depth like to this book which is like really really good again i think a little bit like of, of an issue here is that you're not going to get uh, you're not going to see the implementation but this could be like a very good exercise for you just like reading this stuff and thinking about how you can implement uh, all of these ideas and here you have them, the three books that I suggest you to get started with AI music. Now, obviously, guys, like you could say, well, but there isn't any uh, deep learning like or AI necessarily like in these books. And I would say, yes, that's true, because like most of these techniques are uh, kind of like more like algorithms or just like uh, things that come from audio digital signal processing. Uh, but this is the kind of like backbone that you need uh, to get you started with like AI music. Now, regarding like actual deep learning applications or like more in general machine learning applications like in um, uh, music processing, well, for that, unfortunately, there isn't much resources like or textbooks like out there right now. So uh, for that, you will need to take a look at the research paper. So for example, you can check out ISMIR, which is the International Society of Music Information Retrieval. They have a website and there you can find all of the cutting edge research. The problem with that is that the informations are like kind of like scattered and it's difficult to read these like quite advanced research papers. But uh, because of that, uh, you may know by now, but I'm writing a book on deep learning for audio and this is going to be like a very interesting like journey. So if you want to like learn more about that, you can check out this video. You should find it somewhere like over here. And I hope like this was like uh, an informative video for you guys. If you have any questions, as always, please post them in the comment section below. And I hope I'll see you next time. Cheers.